fierce man. The whole of his face except his forehead. His eyes and his nose was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr. Twit felt that this hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth, he was neither, neither of these things. Mr. Twit was a twit. He was born a twit, and now at the age of 60, he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr. Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on most hairy-faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr. Twit wash his bristly nail brushy face of his? The answer is never, not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. Dirty beards. As you know, an ordinary unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it is not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to the hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in among the hairs and stay there. You and I quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy man cannot do that. We can also, if we are careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr. Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfast and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. There weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or on his sleeve while he was eating. But if you look closely not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs, and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all other disgusting things Mr. Twit likes to eat. If you look close still, 
Hold your noses, ladies and gentlemen. If you peer deep into the mustachy bristles sticking out over his upper lip, you would probably see much larger objects than had escaped the wipe of his hand. Things that have been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese, or a mouldy old cornflake, or even the slimy tail of a tin sardine. Because, because of all this, Mr. Twit never went really hungry by sticking out his tongue and curling it sidewards to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth. He was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr. Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. Mrs. Twit. Mrs. Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a pity she didn't, because that, at any rate, would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. Take a look at her. Have you ever seen a woman with an uglier face than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs. Twit wasn't born ugly. She'd had quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you why. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on their face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot even, cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams, and you will always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs. Twit's face. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people that this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and carried a stick so that she could hit things with it, things like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was the glass eye. Mrs. Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. The glass eye. You 
you can play a lot of tricks with the glass eye because you can take it out and pop it back in again anytime you like it. You can bet your life Mrs. Twit knew all the tricks. One morning she took out her glass eye and dropped it into Mr. Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr. Twit sat there drinking the beer slowly. The throth made a white ring on the hairs around his mouth. He wiped the white froth on his sleeve and wiped his sleeve on his trousers. You're, you're plotting something, Mrs. Twitch said, keeping her back turned so he wouldn't see that she had taken out her glass eye. Whenever you go all quiet like that, I know very well you're plotting something. Mrs. Twitch was right. Mr. Twit was plotting away like mad. He was trying to think of a really nasty trick he could play Why are with his gone? wife that day. That is uh, doing... Uh, are, you, are you listening? Are you listening this day? Yes. And why are you just playing that? You did not notice that? You'd better be careful, Mrs. Twitch said, because okay. when I see you starting the plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, Mr. Twitch said. He went on drinking his beer and his evil mind kept working away on the latest horrid trick he was going to play on the old one. Suddenly as Mrs. Twit tipped the last drop of suddenly as Mr. Twit tipped the last drop of beer down his throat, caught sight of Mrs. Twit's Awful glass eye staring up at him from the bottom of the mug. It made him jump. He, I told you I was watching you. Cackled Mrs. Twitt. I got eyes everywhere, so you better be careful. To peer her back for the glass eye in his beard, in his beard Mr. Twit decided he would put a frog in Mrs. Twit's bed. He caught a big one down in the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, when Mrs. Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr. Twit slipped the frog between her sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs. Twit came back and climbed into her bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itching, dirty old hags like her always have itchy tummies. Then, all at once, she felt something cold 
and slimy crawling over her feet. She screamed. What's the matter with you, Mr. Twit said. Help, screamed Mrs. Twit, bouncing about. There's something in my bed. I bet it's that giant skilly wiggler I saw on the floor just now. That what? screamed Mrs. Twit. I tried to kill it, but it got away. Mr. Twit said it's got teeth like screwdrivers. Help, screamed Mrs. Twit. Save me, it's all over my feet. It'll bite off your toes, said Mr. Twit. Mrs. Twit fainted. Mr. Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured the water over Mrs. Twit's head to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. It started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a good time. When Mrs. Twit came to, the frog had just jumped onto her face. This is not a nice thing to happen to anyone in bed at night. She screamed again. By golly, it is a giant skilly wiggler, Mr. Twit says. I bite off your, it'll bite off your nose. Mrs. Twit leapt out of bed and flew downstairs and spent the night on the sofa. The frog went to sleep on her pillow. Wormy Spaghetti The next year, to peer Mr. Twit back for his frog trick, Mrs. Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She, she chose big long ones and you put them in a tin and carry the tin back to the house under her apron. At one o'clock she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was coloured with tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Hey, my spaghetti's moving, cried Mrs. Twit, <laughs> walking around in it with her fork. With his, with his fork. Oh, Mr. Twist, my God. It's a new, it's a new kind, Mrs. Twist said, taking a mouthful from her own plate, which, of course, had no worms. Called squiggly spaghetti.
It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice okay. and hot. Mr. Twit. Not 